Hello, Maine and Greater New England. Hello. We're coming to see you guys in Portland, and we can't wait. We would love to see you there. Yep, we'll be at the State Theater on August 30th, and if you're interested, you can get tickets and information at sysklive.com. Throw some lobster at us. Welcome to Stuff You Should Know, a production of iHeartRadio's How Stuff Works. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark. There's Charles W. Chuck Bryant. There's Jerry over there. The sun is shining. Our collars are popped. The tongues of our shoes are hanging out. And um, it smells really nice in here. That's right. Which must mean one thing, Chuck. It's time to talk some stuff you should know shiz. <laughs> <laughs> some shiz at? Can I say that? Sure. All right, good. Well, I just did, didn't I? You did. Uh, so, uh, we are actually talking about solar power today, and I'm a little psyched about this one because I was putting this thing together over months, dude. You would think solar power is such a hot, sexy topic, you know, that there would be just reams and reams of just stuff to research. And there is, but it's all really wonky and really technical, and there's a lot of stuff that contradicts other stuff. And I got this feeling of dread researching this, that the cheerleaders and champions of solar power are losing their um, resolve to an extent. Oh, they'll yeah? still sell you a solar panel. They'll still tell you solar's great. And I know that they truly believe that. But I think that they are worried that it's, it's not taking off like they expected it to. But then let me just caveat that with one other thing. And then we'll get started and I'll be quiet for the rest of the podcast. If you look at the numbers and the figures, solar has quietly um, made a name for itself and established itself, at least in the United States, to an astounding degree. So I'm not quite sure what I'm picking up on when I f get the sense that they're worried, because if you look at it, it's actually doing really, really well and growing all the time. Let's discuss. Solar power. Yeah. Power from the sun converted into electricity. Right. So you can say, screw you, power company. Yeah. <laughs> or pay me, power company. Yep. You can say, take this power bill and shove it. So the sun, uh, this is pretty neat here at the beginning of this that you put together here. Um, the, sun ray, uh, the sun's rays give off about 1,000 watts of energy per square meter. So if you mm -hmm. pull the camera back a bit. And you look at Texas, let's say, a lot of sun in Texas, mm -hmm. a lot of land in Texas. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of a lot of stuff in Texas. There really is. And but not the much good thing of some about, stuff. No, that's true. <laughs> I was going to say the good thing about Texas is you could completely cover it with solar rays and no one but the people who live in Texas would have a problem with it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, gear. Gear, gear, gear. All right. Um, so, if you look at a mass, a uh, land mass that's as big as Texas, they uh -huh. receive a, a little under 700 terawatts over the, over the course of one hour on a, yeah. on a, at noon on a sunny day. 700 is, terawatts. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, but is it a, a lot? Who knows? Who could possibly know? <laughs> if you want to compare that, you're being coy. Mm -hmm. uh, in that same hour, the total amount of human made energy, energy production on planet Earth, and this is all energy production that you could possibly dream of is 17.7 .7 terawatts mm -hmm. compared to 700 terawatts. That's 40 times less than what the sun delivered to Texas in, in just that hour. Yeah, right. And the Union of Concerned Scientists, a happening group who I love, um, they say that 18 days of sunshine that hits across the entire Earth contains the same amount of energy stored in the entirety of the planet's reserves of coal, oil, and natural gas. If you dug up and burned every bit of coal, oil, and natural gas, it would only produce as much energy as 18 days worth of global sunlight. That's astounding. Yeah, and these are, you know, these are facts that are, have mm. 50 caveats beneath each of them. Mm which we're going to talk about. But yeah. it, it is a prime example, and I think just a good way to kind of indicate just how much energy, potential energy, there is coming from the sun every day. 
Yeah, and just, I mean, to, to point out the obvious, the great thing about solar is there is no greenhouse gas emissions when you use solar electricity. It's just clean energy, and it's free because it's from the sun. That's right. And before you start typing... Oh, yeah, but what about you? It costs a lot to make these things. They're made of silicon. And <laughs> Before you do that, we were going to talk about all that stuff. Yeah. But Josh very clearly said, uh, once you have these things set up, that's that's when the real benefit comes. Yes. Right. And if I hadn't said it, I was going to eventually. Well, no, you basically said it. Like, yeah. you know, when they're working, when they're active, they're not using fossil fuels. Thank you, Chuck. All right, so let's go back in time a bit because if you think solar power, <clears throat> you think, well, this stuff, you know, was invented in the 1970s. Not so. Uh, you have to go all the way back to 1839, believe it or not, when a French physicist named Alexandre Edmond, uh, Josh says this. <laughs> Bequerelar. <laughs> Man, I practiced it a million times. Bequerelar, I think. Be- Bequerelar. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a tough word. Yes, it is. There's a couple extra consonants in there that just shouldn't be there. That's right. So uh, this dude, he is the one that first demonstrated uh, the photovoltaic effect, which is basically the ability of a solar cell to turn sun into electricity all the way back in 1839. Right, but no one knew exactly how this worked. They just knew that it worked. He was burned at the stake later on <laughs> right. for his black magic. Right. So... Just about 40, about 40 years later, there was a guy named Charles Fritz. And he, in the 1880s, built the world's first rooftop solar array. Coincidentally, just a year after Edison launched the world's first coal fire power plant. Um, but this early solar array was terribly inefficient. It didn't do very much. It could basically power... Um, Jeez, I don't even know what it... It could power a mouse trap. How about that? Sure. Which doesn't even need electricity. That's how little power that this thing produced. <laughs> um, but it definitely demonstrated that it was possible to generate an electrical current um, from sunlight in a way that, that... It was a proof of concept, basically, saying, just give it, like, 90 years and, and we'll understand this better. Yeah, and who was that? That was Fritz. Charlie Fritz? Yep. Fritz was a good guy. But he was no Einstein. No. Uh, Einstein, it would take Einstein, that is, to really explain how this all worked in 1905. Mm -hmm. Because he had a knack for doing that. I'm not sure if people realize that. He was a good explainer. Maybe the original explainer. Well, he would put it in terms that you could really understand. For sure. Like, consider the sandwich. Imagine (laughs) the sandwich is the sun. And then it'd just go from there, and you'd be like, I understand what he's saying. Yeah, and if you think uh, Einstein, oh, yeah, he won a bunch of Nobel Prizes for relativity. Not so. He won the Nobel Prize in physics in 1921 for explaining the photoelectric effect. He didn't win for relativity? No. I didn't know that. Holy cow. What a Unless I'm wrong, and if I am, I'm going to have a lot of egg on my face. That's all right. We'll we'll cook it off with some good old solar electricity. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> gross. It is gross, but also so is the idea of cooked egg in your beard. <laughs> God. <laughs> so Bell Labs in 1954, if you want to talk about the modern uh, PV cell, that was in 1954. And uh, thanks to the U.S. government, really, and the U.S. military, they funded a lot of this early research. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you've ever looked at a picture of Skylab or any of our great satellites, you'll notice <laughs> that they all have these big uh, solar wings. Yeah, yeah, they're solar powered. Yeah. And it was because of U.S. government research in the 50s that we were able to develop those. I think they launched the first solar powered satellite in 1954. No, 58. And then just six years later, they launched the first uh, solar powered satellite whose solar panels could track the sun which is still a pretty whiz-bang thing to have for your solar array, and this was 1964. Yeah, amazing. So the U.S. government invested in the earliest research, and everything was going along really smoothly. Um, But 
One of the things that's always been a problem for solar is oil and natural gas and coal are just so cheap and our infrastructure is set up to burn those things and get electricity yeah. for them. So solar has always been an upstart. But at one point in 1973, oil was not very cheap all of a sudden because of the uh, OPEC embargo that created the energy crisis that made it really uncheap, so much so that the United States looked around and said, we need to find other sources of energy. And they really looked really hard at solar, and it actually gave solar technology a big old boost. 